Amen. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in. We do want to welcome you to Open Door Ministries, located at 12801 South 71 Highway in Grandview, Missouri, where Jesus is the door. For Jesus proclaimed, I am the door for the sheep, and all that enter by me will be safe and find pasture. For the thief comes but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they may have life, and that more abundantly. So we thank God for the abundant life that's only found through a right relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we at Open Door Ministries are a faith-based ministry where people matter. The focus is on the whole body, and Jesus is the door. We're blessed coming in and going out. We are the head and not the tail. We are filled, led, and walked by the Spirit of God. We let no corrupt communication come out of our mouths each and every day. But we speak words of life and words that edify the body of Christ. We are chosen by God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. We are overcomers and more than conquerors through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man, the woman, the boy, the girl that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of the sinner or sit in the seat of the scornful. Our delight is in the law of the Lord and on that law do we meditate day and night. We are trees planted by the rivers of water that bring forth our fruit and our season. Our leaves also shall never wither, and whatsoever we doeth shall prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Let somebody know that God wants you to prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So we come together again this morning by faith. And we are leaning on the everlasting arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Trusting in God, trusting in his holy word. Mm -hmm. And we thank God that he has never failed us yet. Amen. For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we come together on this morning in spirit and in truth. For God seeks worshipers. And true worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and we come into his courts with praise. We are thankful unto him, and we bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. That means each and every one of you, so we thank God for you. Again, we thank God for those that are uh, tuning in via social, uh, social media. We thank God for all of our Facebook friends and and our family, amen, our, our extended family, our, our loved ones, uh, again, our Open Door Ministries family, and, and again, just the entire body of Christ. So we thank God for each and every one, each and every believer, and those that are yet to believe. So we pray that, as Jesus said, that we would let our light so shine that someone will see our good works, that the Father will be glorified, amen. that the saints will be edified, and the devil would be terrified. So I thank God again for another opportunity to come before you, another opportunity to minister to his word. For in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. All things were made by God's word, for without God's word was not anything made that was made. So we thank God again for his word, for he said his word will not come back to him void, but he said it will do what he sent it out to do and prosper in us to whom he has sent it. So we thank God that John 3.16 declares, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. So Heavenly Father, we come to you again as humbly as we know how. We thank you for this day's journey. I thank you for these, your people, these, your sheep, Father God. We ask you to forgive us for our trespasses, our thoughts, our words, our deeds the things that we have done that are not pleasing in your eyesight. We pray, Father God, that you will continually create in us a clean heart and renew your Holy Spirit within us. Help us to be all that you would have us to be 
and enable us to do the things that you have called each and every one of us to do. I pray that you would anoint these lips of clay, that they would be your very oracle, and that we would have ears would all hear what your Holy Spirit is saying today and each and every day as we continually pray for souls to be saved, lives to be changed, your Holy Spirit set free in our lives, broken relationships restored, prison doors open, bodies healed, finances overflowing, not by our might nor by our power, but by your Holy Spirit, we will be careful in all that we do that all glory, all honor, and all praise comes back to you. Father God, we continually lift up the bereaved families. For you said in your word, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So we thank you for the comfort by way of your Holy Spirit, Father God. We continue to lift up the sick and the shut in, Father God. As we continually pray, your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, precious blood against anything that is not like you, Father God. We plead the blood of Jesus against this COVID-19 and the variants yeah. thereof, Father God. We pray for all those that have been affected and infected by it in the name of Jesus, Father God, as we pray for an end to it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. So we come together, Father God, in the spirit of unity and the bond of peace. As Again, Father God, we lift up those that are incarcerated, those that are in the hospital, Father God. Those, Father God, for you said wherever we are, you're right there. So we just lift up all people to you right now, whatever situation we find ourselves in, Father God. And we thank you for your hands upon us all, your hedge of protection around us all, and your angels watching over us. We just thank you right now, Father God, for the heads of state, Father God, the, the leaders all over the world, Father God. We pray that we would be able to live a quiet and peaceable life in true godliness and holiness, Father God. And we just thank you right now, even as we pray the prayer that you gave your disciples to pray, when you taught them praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God. We thank God, amen, that we are resilient, amen, that we are flexible Christians, amen, and we've been lo located to, uh, again, another place on this morning here at the Holy Day Inn Express. So we thank God, amen, that we still are able to get the word out on this morning. Is this one on? Praise God. Amen. Amen, amen. So again, as we prepare to go forth in the word, amen. This song, people sing. Did you want to deliver a welcome on this morning? Well, praise God. We thank God. Amen. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his course with praise. So as we prepare to go into the word on this morning, I thank God for each and every one of you. And I just pray for God to speak to me, through me, and for me, that the words of my lips and the meditations in my heart will be acceptable in your sight, Father God. Order our steps through your word. In Jesus' name. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, we exalt thee, O Lord, we exalt thee. We exalt thee, we exalt thee, O oh Lord. Hallelujah.
here. Praise God. I do thank God for each and every one of you. I do thank God for my wife, my help me. Amen. And again, we had to get quite a bit done on this morning to prepare this room, but we thank God that he has a place. Amen. He opens doors that no man can close and closes doors that no man can open. But we thank God for a prepared place for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Declared that I must go away and prepare a place for you. And, I, and if I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I go there you may be also. So he said, do not let, do not allow your heart to be troubled. So we thank God always for a prepared place. God always has a ram in the bush, but we know that he'll make a highway even in the desert, even in the wilderness. He will make a way out of no way. God specializes. Yeah. And doing the impossible. What's impossible for man is always possible with God. So as long as we're walking with God, all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. While I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Hold my hand, Lord. Hold my hand. Hold my hand, Lord. Please hold my hand. While I'm on this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me in my trials walk with me in my trials please walk with me all along this pilgrim journey I want Jesus to walk with me be my friend, Lord, be my friend. Be my friend, Lord, be my friend. While I'm on this pilgrim journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. You walk with my mother, Lord, please walk with me. You walk with my Father, Lord, please walk with me. All along this tedious journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Walk with me, Lord, walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me while I'm on this tedious journey. I want Jesus to walk with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. The 23rd number of Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Again, I do thank God for you. I thank God for this opportunity. I thank God for you pressing your way, for we recognize there is a blessing in our pressing. As we forget what is behind and look forward to what lies ahead, we press toward the mark. We press toward the prize. We press toward the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, and we are confident that he that has begun this good work in us 
shall perform it until the day of Christ. Amen. 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 So again, I do thank God for you. I thank God for his word on this morning. Amen. 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 I'll have my word open to John chapter 2. I'm going to read a couple of different verses, one from John and one from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. From John chapter 2, I'm going to read verse 19 into your hearing. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'll read verse 19 and verse 20 into your hearing. Amen. 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 So again, we do thank God. John chapter 2 and verse 19 declares, All right, Jesus replied, Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 says, Don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself. Verse 20 declares, For God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. Amen. Amen. So far the reading of God's word. May God add his blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word on this morning. Amen. 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 Our theme on this morning is health for today gives us hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Health for today hope for tomorrow. And that's similar to a theme that we had a couple of weeks ago that said help for today and hope for tomorrow. So in my prayers, God is, is just allow me to understand that each and every word that we bring forth should bring help for that day, for that time, for that hour, and give us hope for tomorrow. And today we want to talk about our bodies, these temples of the Holy Spirit that God has given us, amen, that he's blessed us with, amen, that he dwells in with us, amen. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God, amen, the power of God, amen. Rest in you, even in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who we have asked to come into our heart, our mind, our soul, our spirit, and live through us, to live in us, amen. And it's in him that we live and move and have our very being. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, as we press ahead in this message on health for today and hope for tomorrow, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 declares, Don't you realize that all of you together, that's each and every believer, each and every one of us assembled in this room, those on social media, those on the conference call, wherever they're at, every church door that's open in the name of Jesus, but especially right here at Open Door Ministries where Jesus is the door, where he said, I am the door for the sheep, and all that enter by me will be safe and find pastor, for that thief is coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I am, I am come, I am here that you might have life, and that more abundantly. So don't you realize that all of you together, all of us together, are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God lives in you. He lives in us as we all come together. Peter talked about us being stones, living stones, lively stones that are assembled together that make up the temple of Christ, that make up the body of Christ. Verse 17 of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 says, And God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. I'm going to read that one more time. God will destroy anyone who destroys this temple. For God's temple is holy and you are that temple. Stop deceiving yourselves. Verse 18 declares, if you think you are wise by this world's standards, you need to become a fool to be truly wise. We're not walking in man's wisdom, man's intellect. We're walking in the wisdom of God. Amen led by the Spirit of God. Verse 19 declares, For the wisdom of this world is foolishness to God. As the Scriptures say, He traps the wise in a snare of their own cleverness, their own craftiness. He traps the wise in their own foolishness, in their own ways. Amen. We're talking about the wisdom of this world. Amen. And again, 
The Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, and he knows that they are worthless. Mm -hmm. Apart from God, we are nothing. Apart from God, we can't do anything. But with God, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us using the wisdom of God, not the foolishness of men. Amen. So don't boast about a particular human leader, for everything belongs to God. Everything belongs to you, it says. Let's, let's make that clear. For everything belongs to you. Whether Paul or Apollos or Peter or the world or life and death or the present and the future, everything belongs to you. So he's saying don't get hung up on a particular preacher or teacher or pastor or whoever. Amen. They're all there for your benefit. Amen. Amen, amen. All, we talking about all godly leaders, all those that are led by the Spirit of God, that are speaking the Word of God. He said they all belong to you because, again, a debate had broke out. Some people said, well, I'm being taught by Paul, and some said I'm being taught by Apollos, and others are followers of Peter. Again, uh, Paul said, well, look, we all in this together. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. So we ought to focus on our allegiance to Christ, as verse uh, 23 says, and you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. Yeah. So all the word belongs to you. All the teachers, the preachers, it's all for your benefit. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So he said, everything belongs to you. The cattle of a thousand hills belong to God. Amen? And you belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. It all belongs to you. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. It all pertains to you. Amen? Yeah. So we're talking about health for today. And hope for tomorrow. Our body is the temple of God. There are many verses that instruct us concerning our health and our wellness in the Bible. These verses emphasize the importance of taking our health seriously. We're going somewhere with this. While many of us are familiar with the passage that was read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 through 20, that informed us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's where the Holy Spirit resides. It dwells. It lives in you. Mm -hmm. That's how it leads you and guides you and teaches you and brings things to your remembrance. Amen? Amen. We do not belong to ourselves. God purchased us with a high price. And that high price was the blood of his dear son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions mm -hmm. and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, the punishment for the things that we do wrong were laid upon him, but by his stripes we are healed. Amen. And we're talking about health for today and hope for tomorrow. The blood of his dear son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we must honor God with our bodies. Amen. Amen. There are other passages that also address the need for us to take care of ourselves. Thankfully, God has given us the Bible as a blueprint on how to treat our bodies, which do require proper maintenance. Somebody say proper maintenance. Proper maintenance. Now, while the Bible does not give us direct medical guidance, the Bible does contain many principles that we can apply to our physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. Principles that we as believers should pay close attention to. Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, starting with verse 1, says, My son, forget not my law. Don't forget his word. And let your heart keep my commandments for length of days. Anybody want to live long? Yeah. We're studying the book of Ecclesiastes, and it says God has placed eternity in the hearts of men, that we would desire to uh, longevity in this life. Amen. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Don't forget God's law and keep his word in your heart. It will add long days, long life, and peace, which is the wholeness of God, the shalom of God, where nothing's missing and nothing's broken. Verse 3 said, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Tie mercy and truth around your neck. Write them up on the table of your heart. Verse 4 says, So shall you find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. In verse 5, we know by heart it says, 
trust in the Lord with all your heart, all thine heart, and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge God in all that you do, and he shall direct your path. Verse 7 reminds us, do not be wise in your own eyes, because he just told us the wisdom of man is foolishness to God. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord, the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of integrity, and depart from evil. Verse 8 says, it shall be health to your neighbor, which means health to your body, and marrow to your bones, which means nourishment for your bones. We're talking about keeping God's word, doing that which is pleasing in his eyesight. It's health to our body and healing even to our bone. Amen. The Bible instructs us directly that following God's laws and commandments will lead to proper health. Another reminder of this, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, Solomon said, Now that all has been heard, all has been said, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. It all goes back to the word of God. Amen. Trusting in his holy word. He hasn't failed us yet. Don't turn around. We come this far by faith. If we want to be healthy, it is imperative that we follow God's instructions. We are so blessed to have a heavenly father that loves us and cares for us. He wants us to he said he wants us to prosper and be in good health. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, the word of God declares, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, hearken means listen with the intention of doing what you hear, mm -hmm. and will do that which is right in his sight, mm -hmm. and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, God said, I will put none of these diseases upon you that I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. We're talking about health for today and hope for tomorrow. There were many ancient Egyptians who suffered from many diseases, the plagues and all those things that God put upon them for their disobedience. Amen. Amen. As they were unable, listen now, it says there, were, there are many there were many ancient Egyptians who suffered from many diseases as they were unable to comprehend many of the health principles given by God. They were unable to comprehend the word of God. So we thank God that he gives us an understanding of his word. We thank God for those that come to teach the word that we might understand the word that might keep some of these things off of us, away from us. Amen. Amen. For he said, no evil will befall ye, ye neither will any plague come down thy dwelling in Psalm 91. But he said in Psalm 103 that if it does, I will heal your diseases. Just as it was important that they understood those principles, and, and you know, for the sake of time, I'm not going to give you all those verses, amen. But he talked about dulling their ears and, 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 and blinding their sight so that with their eyes they can't see the word, and with their, their ears they can't understand the word, and they, uh, they can't hear the word, and with their hearts they can't understand the word because of the hardness of their hearts. That's why they were unable to comprehend the word of God, amen. But we thank God that, that, that our eyes have, can, can see and our ears can hear and our hearts can understand what thus says the Lord. And that's the Holy Spirit working in you because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit whereby you've been sealed until the day of redemption. So just as it was important that they understand those principles, but they didn't, it's essential that we also understand these principles today. We know from Scripture that one of the most significant reasons God cares about our health is the reason he cares. It's the reason God wants you healthy. It's the reason he wants you growing in his word, understanding in his word, moving, living in his word. It's the reason God wants you to be able to get around and do what he's called each and every one of us to do. It's because when we don't pay attention to our health, we cannot make the most out of our lives for God. Amen. We can't do all the things that God has called us to do. Amen. When we're not healthy. Praise God. And it all begins with following his word, hearkening to his voice, doing what his word said. 
we won't be able to live our best life when we're not healthy. Amen. And we're talking about health for today and hope for tomorrow. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21 tells us that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Hmm? Death and life are in the power of our tongue. It's, 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 it's near you. It's in your mouth. Hmm? And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Huh? The power of life and death is right there in your mouth. Amen. 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 As you speak words of life, is that what we say we do here at Open Door Ministry? We speak words of life and words that edify the body of Christ, which means build up the body of Christ. Amen. That the saints be edified, God be glorified. And the devil be terrified. Go ahead and preach, church. God bless y'all. Amen. And the devil be terrified. Isaiah chapter 57 and verse 19, God said, I create the fruit of your lips. Come on. The power of life and death is in your tongue. God said, I create the fruit of your lips. I put it right there. Amen. Amen. Peace. Peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, says the Lord. I will heal him. Uh -huh. Isaiah 57 and verse 19. He said, uh -huh. yes, I will heal him. He said, I put the words of life in your mouth. Amen. I put the praise on your lips. Yeah. I create the fruit of your lips. Mm -hmm. I created it. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why it's important to walk in the wisdom, the spirit of God, and not the wisdom of man, not the wisdom of this world. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs 16 and 24 says, pleasant words. Mm -hmm. We're talking about health for today and hope for tomorrow. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 24 tells us that pleasant words are like honeycomb. Pleasant words, amen? Yeah. Why are you mad, though? <laughs> Come on, somebody. Why are you mad, though? Pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. Yeah. Pleasant words. Just, just speak pleasantly, amen? Pleasant Let your speech words. be with grace, seasoned yeah. with salt. Yeah. So we know how to talk to one another. Proverbs 15 1 tells us a soft answer turns away wrath, turns away anger. Amen. Yes. And we, we're talking about health for the day. Amen. And hope for tomorrow. We're talking about living a, a healthy life. Amen. So pleasant words. Huh? A health to our bones. Psalms 118 and verse 17, the psalmist said, and we, we talking about the fruit of our lips and, and our words have a power and what we say, amen, and, and we quote it, amen, but Psalm 18 and 7, the Bible says, I, David said, I shall not die, but I'm going to live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah, the power's in your tongue. And God said, I give you the fruit of your lips. I put those words there. The Holy Spirit brings it back to your remembrance as you've written in the table of your heart as you study to show yourself approved unto God. Yes. That you need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the truth. Amen. So I was sick for a little while. Amen. But it was for God to get the glory. Amen. 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 So I can let you know that it's God who healed my body. It's God who brought me through. It's God who raised me up. It's God who restored me. It's God who delivered me. It's God who healed me. It's God who touched me. It's God. It's God. It's God. Psalm 103, the psalmist said, Who healed all your iniquity? Who forgives all your iniquity, all your sins? Who heals all your diseases? Ha, it's God. Amen. Nobody but God. It's God. It's God. And God all by himself. Amen. Psalms 107, Psalms 107 and verse 20 said, He sent his word and healed them. We're talking about healing in the word of God. It's right there in the Word. As you study the Word of God, it changes your whole countenance. It changes your whole outlook. It changes your whole attitude. Amen? Amen. I, I want you to know that your attitude determines your altitude, how high you're able to rise. Amen? Yea, yeah. though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I'm not fearing any evil. He make me to lie down sometimes. I don't feel so good sometimes in green pastures yeah. so he can Restore my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. This sickness is not unto death, but for God to get the glory. Amen. Yes. Yes. He sent his word in Psalms 107 and verse 20. And he healed them and, healed. and delivered them yes. from their destruction. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. I'm just saying, God has already sent his word, even his son. 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His name is called the Word of God. Yeah. All we have to do is receive what thus says the Lord. Receive the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And God's Word will not come back to him void or without results. Isaiah 55 tells us. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 17 and 22 tells us a merry heart. Proverbs 17 and 22 tells us a merry heart. A joy-filled heart. Amen. Fruit of spirit, love, joy. Mm -hmm. A joy-filled heart. Doeth good like a medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't need no medicine. All I need is some joy. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. The joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8 10 said, shall be your strength. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes all I need to do is talk to myself. The yeah. fruit of my lips that God has placed there. When I say I'm not going to die, I'm going to live and declare the works of the Lord. Amen. Even though I'm going through, amen, trouble not going to last. Oh, if I had one, two more preachers up here, amen, I'm going to give it another try. Trouble not going to last. Oh, Hallelujah. Weeping man do it for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Come on and preach, church. Amen. amen. God bless you. It says, but a broken spirit Dries the bones. See, the adversary won't you broke down. See, if he can't steal nothing else, the thief comes to steal, kill, and to destroy, he's going to come and try to steal your joy. Because he know your joy is like a good medicine. Amen? So he's going to try to steal that. Amen? Get you broke down. And tells us a broken spirit dries up the bones. See, he just told us in, in uh, Proverbs 3, amen, that, that, that it was health to our navel, our navel and, and strength to our bones, amen, health to our body and healing to our bones, amen. Yeah. We're talking about the word of God, but the thief will try to steal the word, amen. Yeah. As quick as you hear it, before you can get from point A to point B, your adversary will try to bring up yes. a storm. Come on. Hmm? Yes, Lord. To take your focus off Jesus, amen. Yes, to take your focus off God, to take your focus off the one who heals our diseases. When we think about the health of our loved ones, we want to make sure that they are as healthy as they should be. Yes. We look out for one another. Yes. Whether it's our children or our parents, our children are younger than us, our, our parents are older than us, we look out for one another. Amen? Yes. Even those that are our age, because sometimes we're going through, but we look out for each other. We don't want nobody to be sick. Amen? Amen. So we look out for one another. So uh, we want them to be as healthy as they, as they should be. Amen? The same should apply to our own health. Sometimes we're so busy looking out for others, we neglect ourselves. I'm, I'm going to look straight ahead on that. Amen? It's critical that we lead by example. Hmm? This is the only way, and the only way this is possible is by taking our own health seriously. Huh? Get yourself in the Word of God. Soak yourself in the Word of God. Amen? Our health means so much to God that He says our bodies are His temple. Yeah. Belong yeah. to him. Amen. Yeah. That's how important our health is to God. Amen. Amen. Our body is the temple of God. And he said, no evil going to befall you. Mm -hmm. He said, the gates of hell is not going to prevail against you. Mm -hmm. So we are commanded not to put things in our body that cause us physical harm. Yeah. I'm going to look straight ahead, but you right. think about it. Huh? He commanded us not to put things in our body that cause us physical harm. Mm -hmm. God tells us this because we are precious to him. we precious in his eyesight. The angels ask him in, in uh, uh, Psalms 108. He said, who is this man that you created? That you're so mindful of him? Or the son of man that you visit him? He said, oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who is this man you created? That you're so mindful of him? He said, out of the mouths of babes and, and sucklings, you ordain strength to quiet the enemy and steal the avenger. You can tell that sickness to shut up. You can tell that disease to get out of my way. Amen. So because we're precious to God, that we will all face temptation when it comes to what we consume. But remember, we don't want to put things or do things to our body that will cause us harm. Because our bodies are not our own. The scripture told us we've been bought with a price. The shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We don't belong to ourselves. We belong to God. Take care of yourself. Why are you saying this, brother preacher? I, I thought about it a long time ago, amen. I, I looked at how long my mother lived. I looked at how long my grandmother lived. And I said, if I keep going at this pace, if I live to be old, amen, I'm not going to be in good shape. 
I better start taking care of myself. Yes. That's just free information right there. Amen. Amen. Take care of yourself. Because the, the Bible said that God has placed eternity in our heart. We desire to live long. Yes. But if I live long, don't you want to be able to get around? Amen. Don't you want to be able to do some things? Amen. Amen. Don't you want to be able to help those that are dependent on you? Amen. Those that are around you? Amen. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Soak yourself in the word of God. I'm telling you, it'll change your outlook. It'll change your life. Amen. So we all face temptation when it comes to what we consume. Yet we do know that our bodies feel better when we put the right things in. Them. And we avoid the things that we uh, shouldn't put in. Them. God tells us to honor our temples if we want to enter his. First, back to that First Corinthians chapter six and verse twenty, God instructed us to glorify Him in our body. Simple as that, Amen. God instructed us to make to, to God is instructing us to make our physical health a priority, so that it glorifies Him. Amen. See, when I'm when, when I'm in the best health, the best shape I can be in, when some of these things try to run up on me, they stumble and fall. Amen. Somebody hear me in the Holy Ghost. For the Bible says that you are God's handiwork. You his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Yeah. Huh? Which God has already prepared in advance. He's already ordained ahead of time. You've been ordained by God for good works. It says you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus, even in the word of God. That's Ephesians 2 and 10. So we must glorify God in every way. Everyone. This includes how we live our lives. Yeah. If our health isn't our top priority... Then we limit in ourselves significantly. I know some of you, some people might be saying, well, why are you saying this, brother preacher? Because this foolishness is out here, this COVID-19, and it, it's got variances thereof coming along. But I want you to know, amen, we came this far by faith. Come on. Huh? We, 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 we lived through a whole lot of diseases, thanks be to God. Amen. amen. Again, we are, are we, we still mourn for those that have lost their lives. Amen. But I'm speaking to those that still have a chance on today. Amen. When we, choose, when we choose the proper diet, the proper exercise, the proper diet plans for our bodies, it's one of the greatest gifts we can give to God. Mm. I'm just telling you this because I love it. It's been in my spirit for a while, and God said, today is the day. Go ahead and tell him. Amen? Amen. It's because I love you, and God loves you even more. The scripture teaches us that those who allow God to guide their lives generally live healthier lives. Mm. Allow God to lead your life. Amen. He's not going to lead you nowhere you shouldn't go. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said we all going to be tempted. Amen. But he said he'll make a way of escape. Amen. If I can stop and think, God's got work for me to do. Amen. Am I glorifying him right now? I need to glorify him in my body so that I can complete the task, the assignment that he's given me. Mm -hmm. I need to be around to do it. Amen. Amen. Now don't think this means that those who don't follow God are more susceptible to sickness. That's not what I'm saying. And don't take this to mean if you follow God, you're going to be disease free. Huh? But he said, I will heal you. He said, I'm the God who heals. Hallelujah. In uh, 3 John chapter 1 and verse 2, we say it all the time. 3 John 1 in the back of your Bible. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2. It says, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you will be in good health. Somebody say good health. Good health. health. Just as it is well with your soul. Amen. Huh? Paul said, I pray your whole mind, body, soul, and spirit be preserved blameless until the coming of the Lord. He wants us healthy in every way. Amen. Hallelujah. God always has our physical, our mental, and our spiritual well-being in mind. God promises us many blessings. The commandments given to us about our physical health and well-being are there for our own spiritual good. Somebody say my own spiritual good. My own spiritual good. We're talking about health for today. Mm -hmm. Giving us hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. It's crucial that we're conscious of the enemy who's always attempting to sabotage mm. your daily walk with Christ. He come to steal, kill, and destroy. He said ambushes all over the place. Mm -hmm. hmm? Attempting to sabotage your daily walk with Christ. Mm -hmm. 
That's why I said, Jesus said, if any man follow me, let him take up his cross daily and follow me. Each and every day you have to make a concerted effort to follow Christ, to follow the word of God. Amen. Yeah. Because your adversary is out there daily trying to sabotage your walk. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm? He wants to break you down. Huh? If he can break you down physically, amen, and you can't get up and go and do as, as, as you please, as, as the Spirit of God in you is giving you that unction that we looked at on last week, that anointing, but we know it's that, uh, that unction, that anointing that destroys the yoke of sabotage, amen. Yeah. But he wants to break you down completely if he can. So you're not living that abundant life in Christ. Your adversary wants you broke down, amen. So whenever you tempted to, to put the wrong thing in your body, or to do the wrong thing, amen. I don't care what it is, amen. what it might be, amen. I'm not even going to try to come up with a list. You think about it. You think about it. Huh? Know that God wants more for your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want you to know I'm preaching to myself first. I'm sharing it with you. Amen. Huh? Be careful, amen. Yeah. Know that God wants more for your life. Yeah. There's a reason we call him. The great physician. Yeah. Is he not the great physician? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, well, maybe you know him as Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we see so many accounts in the Bible of God's healing. Mm -hmm. It was just too many of them, but you stop and think. Amen. Mm -hmm. The woman with the issue. Uh, uh -huh. just, just go. I'm sure God placed something in your heart and your spirit right now. Amen. I'm just going to give you a minute to, to think about that. And if you can't come up with one, shame on you. Uh -huh. We see so many accounts in the Bible. The lepers and everybody else. Uh -huh. There's just, just too many for me to list. That's right. huh, the man at the temple with the withered hand. was hiding his hand because it was withered. He said, stretch, quit hiding your hand. Stretch forth your hand. Uh -huh. And when he, when he took his hand out, it was healed. Yeah. Mm. Huh? That's the kind of God we serve. Yeah. You don't have to hide your hand. He said, show me your hand. Yeah. It was healed. Yeah. That's the kind of God we serve. Oh, God we serve. Hmm? There's so many examples of this in the Bible. Too many for me to even begin to give an account. Mm. I just said a few. Well, I could go on and on and on and on. Hmm? Yes. Yes. But I want you to be informed on today, just to sum it up. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Acts 10 and 38. We're talking about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ now that God sent to heal us. He said you shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Yes. You shall name him Emmanuel which means God with us. Yes. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. Paul began to give an account of how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good. He created us for good works. Mm -hmm. Who went about doing good. And healing all. That were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. It's your adversary that wants you broke down. Yes, huh? He wants to break you down completely. Break you down to nothing if he can. Mm -hmm. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. For God was with him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you with God. You can do all things. Oh, all things are possible. Yeah. Come on. Amen. So Jesus was sent by God the Father to heal us. Yeah. The Bible said he stands at the door and knocks and if, if we let him in, he'll come in yeah. and sup with us and heal us and strengthen us. Yeah. Huh? So God said, God the Father sent his son Jesus to heal us. And not only will he restore our bodies, but he'll heal our wounds. Yeah. If you're facing a tough challenge when it comes to your health and wellness, your mental, your spiritual, your physical health. Know that God has the power, he has the power. to heal you. Yes, Thank you. We talk about health for the day yes. and hope for tomorrow. Yes. Know that God has the power to restore you, to refresh you, to replenish you, to regenerate you. We should all take our health seriously. If we want to live that life that glorifies God. If we don't take our health seriously, we can perhaps, and maybe will, break down. Mentally, physically, or spiritually. 
if we don't take it seriously, if we don't take the word of God seriously and know that it's health to our body and healing to our bone, mm -hmm. we can and perhaps will break down at some point. It might be mentally, it might be physically, it could be spiritually. And if that happens, we can't live the life for the people that matter the most to us. We can't be there for them. Think about the things that are harmful to your body that could be taking years from your life. And on today, as we're talking about health for today and hope for tomorrow, consider reducing or even removing those things from your life. I'm saying this because I love you. Amen. And follow the doctor's orders. Amen. Amen. Even the great physician. Yes. Follow his order. Follow his word. Amen. Yes. Exercise an abundance of caution these days. Yes. In all ways. Amen. Yes. So you can focus on living your best life. Praise God. Praise God. Even living your blessed life. Yes. So I pray that this message has been health for somebody on today Amen. and hope Amen. even for tomorrow. Because in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God declared, if my people, we're talking about Christian believers who are called by my name, should humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hear from heaven, yeah. forgive their sins, yeah. and, heal and heal the land. Yeah. Heal their land. I want you to know that the Bible says we have this treasure, this spirit of God, in earthen vessels. Yeah. We're earthen vessels. He said, heal the land. He's talking about even this land. Yeah. Right here. Amen. Our bodies. Yeah. Huh? The Bible says he created us from dust. Amen. Yeah. So, so Paul said, we have this treasure, this spirit of God, this power of God. In earthen vessels. Mm -hmm. That the excellency of power comes from God and not from us. These bodies are frail, but they're mighty through God. Yeah. Amen. To pull down strongholds and cast down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, against the word of God. Yeah. He said, I hear from heaven, forgive your sin and heal the land. Yeah. So we know that this power comes from God mm -hmm. and not from us. Mm -hmm. But it all goes back to a confession of faith. Yes, right. As we said, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. Yes. And if any man opens, he said, I'll come in yes. and sup with him and yes. reside with him and dwell in him. Yes. That's why the body said, the Bible says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, yes. that lives in you, yes. that resides in you. As we have the Holy Spirit, we have God the, the Spirit, we have God the Son, we have God the Father. Because the Bible says these three are one that cannot be separated. Amen. So when I invite Jesus in, I get the power of God, the Holy Spirit of God, yes. and even God himself. Yes. But the Bible says God was in Christ Jesus reconciling us to himself on the cross. Amen. If you believe the report you heard on this day, then let us close with a prayer of faith, a confession of faith. That says, Father God, Father God, I know who your son is. I know who your son is. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You are the Lord of my life. You are the Lord of my life. Forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I believe that you were born. I believe that you were born. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that your blood covers my sins. I believe that your blood covers my sins. And I believe you got up from the grave. With all power in your hands, I ask you to come into my heart, come into my mind, come into my soul, come into my spirit, and live your life through me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into my heart. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. In your precious name, Jesus, I pray. Let every heart declare, amen. 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 We do thank God for you. We thank God for health for today and hope even for tomorrow. Again, I do thank God for each and every one of you. 
Again, if we prepare for the giving and receiving of our tithes and of our offerings, and we know no matter how hard we try, we can't be God given. The more we give, the more He gives to us. Amen. 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 We thank God for those that are uh, able to give in person. Amen. Those that maybe mail it in to uh, Open Door Ministries, uh, PO Box 46221, Amen. Kansas City, Missouri, zip code 64134. We thank God for those that give on Cash App. Amen. We are uh, ODM Donations is our name on Cash App. Amen. On Venmo, we are open underscore door underscore ministries. Amen. But we ask God to, we, we know that God is blessing you either way. Amen. For the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. And we at Open Door Ministry to understand that God gives us the fruit of our lips, these words of our lips, even by way of His Holy Spirit. So we do believe in confessing the word of God. Amen. 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 So we will do our Open Door Ministry's confession that says, Because I am a cheerful giver. Because I am a cheerful giver. Yeah. And God is faithful to His word. And God is faithful to His word. There is meat in God's house. There is meat in God's house. Because I am a cheerful giver. Because I am a and God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to his word. He rebukes the devourer for my sake. He rebukes the devourer for my sake. Because I am a cheerful giver. Because I am a cheerful giver. And God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to his word. He opens up the windows of heaven. He opens up the windows of heaven. And pours out blessings on me. And pours out blessings on me. There shall not be room enough to receive. There shall not be room enough to receive. Because I am a cheerful giver. Because I am a cheerful giver. And God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to his word. All the people of this world call me blessed. All the people of this world call me blessed. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed coming in. And I'm blessed coming out. And I'm blessed coming out. I am the head. I am the head. And not the tail. And not the tail. I'm not in poverty. I'm not in poverty. I am in prosperity. I am in prosperity. My abundance is a supply. My abundance is a supply. To those who are in lack. To those who are in lack. I have more than enough. I have more than enough. All of my needs are met. All of my needs are met. All of my bills are paid. All of my bills are paid. I owe no man anything. I owe no man anything. Except to love him. Except to love him. Jesus has come. Jesus has come. To give me this kind of life. To give me this kind of life. And that more abundantly. More the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want. I prosper in everything I do. I prosper in everything I do. Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 God loves a cheerful yes. giver. Amen. Yes. Yes. So we're asking God to bless you right now, 30, 60, even 100 fold. Amen. Those that are here in person, those that are tuning in, amen, those that will see this later, amen. But we thank God this is the information and technology age. And as we see that, we know that we're drawing near to our Lord and Savior's return, amen. We said he would come back when the kingdom of God has been preached in all four corners of the earth. And with these satellites and, and this social media and these things, I'm telling you, the word is out there. Amen, amen. So take care. And know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. God. That's something to give God a hand clap for. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You can't beat God yet. You can beat God giving. No matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives to you. Just keep on giving because it's really true that you can be God giving no matter how you try. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I do thank you. Okay. okay. Amen. Sister Amen. Pat said we'll, we'll give our offering on the way out. Yeah. Amen. We've got a different setup on today. Amen. And again, we are being mindful. Amen. Uh, uh, being health conscious. Amen. Health for today and uh, giving us hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. So, again, we thank God for your obedience with the mask. Amen. And, and we social distance the, uh, the best that we can. Amen. And, 
again, we continue to plead the blood of Jesus and pray the blood of Jesus over all as we pray for an end to the COVID-19, yeah. amen, and the bearance thereof, and all sickness and disease and plague yeah. that are in this earth, amen, whether yeah. it be cancer or, or just whatever it is, yeah. Father God, we, yeah. we pray your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's blood against anything that is not like you, Father God, and we pray, Father God, for continued healing in the land, yeah. even in these earthen vessels, yeah. we will be careful to give all glory, honor, and praise back to you, yeah. As we pray right now, Father God, for your love, the grace and mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion, the fellowship, the power of the Holy Spirit yeah. to rest, rule, and abide in all of our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirit, not only this day, but every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Jude 24 25 says, Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you as fathers before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Praise God. I love you. I thank God for you. We will continue to lift up the young people. A school is starting. Amen. Some of them are traveling a mighty long ways. Amen. And we thank God for each and every report that we hear. Amen. And, and God's traveling mercies. And they understand that the Holy Spirit is there with them, wherever they are. Amen. And God does have their mental, physical, and spiritual well-being in mind. Praise God. Praise God. We love you. We thank Cameron, God for you. Cameron asked me again this morning to tell Open Door, thank you so much for your prayer. Amen. Uh, and to continue to pray for him while he's in college. Amen. So Amen. Amen. We pray for Cameron and all the young people that's going to college, going off for of school the first time. Amen. And some of them are going into the the kindergarten for the first time and, and we're dropping children off at daycare for the first time and we pray for them and then we pray for those that are repeat amen. amen 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 those that are returning to school praise God and know that the Holy Spirit is going to bring that information back to your remembrance just study it hallelujah to show yourself approved love you God bless you and I like the church to pray for my niece Kila Young and she has COVID really bad, and they took off a ventilator, she's still not doing good, so we just pray for her and her family, and her grandchildren, her family. Amen. Keep on my brothers, uh, daughter, Kevin, Amen. Amen. We're praying for her right now in the name of Jesus. All those that are in the hospital, and some are at home in quarantine, we continue to lift up all these that have been affected, and those that have been infected yes. by COVID-19, Father God, for we heard in your word that you were able to heal our diseases, yes. Father God. Yes. Continue to do it for your glory, Hallelujah. Father God. Yes. Continue to heal those that have an opportunity to be healed. Yes. And we thank you right now, Father thank God, you, Father. and we continue to lift up those that do more for yes. you said that they would be blessed. So, yes. so we thank you right now, Father thank God, you. for your healing hand. In Jesus' name, Jesus name. do it for your glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 I don't think so. I might have stopped.